This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hi, and welcome to Third Eye View. Today our show is a little bit different because we've got two guests on at once instead of just one. Um, I'm not very good with names. I can, if I remember the first name, I'll never remember your last name. So our guests are Carrie and Ryan. Uh, Carrie obviously is the one with the glasses and more hair. And uh, <laughs> marginally more hair. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, both of you, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. And Carrie has just opened up a a shop, a store in Owen Sound, and you beautiful crystals. I went out, I went there on Saturday for the grand opening, figuring I was going to be able to buy some crystals, right? <laughs> The lineup was absolutely <laughs> incredible. Honestly, it was all around the room and right to the front door. And I thought, well, I, there's no way I can stand in line that long. So I'll be back next week. Yes. <laughs> A special trip just to come in and get crystal. Yes. Um, beautiful pieces of malachite. And honestly, the, uh, the display for the crystals is awesome. The... The variety of crystals is absolutely amazing. So anyone, if you're looking for crystals, this is where you want to go. And I'll get Carrie to um, give the address of the store uh, later on in the show. Now, Carrie, we'll start with you. What motivated you to open Glimmer? And why that name? Okay. Well, this is a long answer. I hope that's okay. <laughs> well, we've, we've only got like half an hour. Okay. All right. So I'll keep... I want to get Ryan in here too. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, so Glimmer has sort of been this um, vision of mine probably for the last three years. I um, suffer from a hereditary disorder that it's, it's very rare. It's very, it's sort of similar to MS in that it will just kind of take away one thing at a time as I as I age, um, I wasn't diagnosed till I was 42. And because I was diagnosed, my mom actually was diagnosed. My grandmother who has passed probably had it as well. And my son actually has it. Oh. So me getting diagnosed was a, was a huge, a huge thing for our family. Um, my mother, there's 13 different strains of the disease and my mother, um, has classic EDS, which she had her knees replaced at 30, her hips replaced at 50, and she needs her elbows done. And so she spent her whole life not knowing what was wrong with her. Yeah. So I, um, I've sort of navigated through um, trying to figure out what was wrong, um, specialist to specialist to specialist to doctor to doctor to doctor with uh, little, little to no relief. So three years ago, I was running a very successful landscaping business called the Garden Fairy, and um, my disease took a little bit of a toll on me, and I ended up, um, basically all the organs in my body fell, and they had to do this seven-hour surgery where they tried to make little hammocks for all my organs and uh, put me back together like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> so needless to say, after that, no more landscaping. Um, so I closed up the business and I basically spent the last three years trying to figure out what the universe needs me to do. And what the universe needs me to do is to now bring all of the things that have brought me some relief um, in my life to the community. So whether that be uh, practitioners like Ryan, uh, products within my store. So it's sort of like alternative wellness um, because I believe that we need to have Western medicine as well as every other medicine and healing practice all brought together into one. So Absolutely. that's how Glimmer came about as a glimmer in my little mind. <laughs> and the name Glimmer just fluke I was thinking about crystals and how they're pretty and they sparkle and they glimmer and 
I had thought about that name. I thought, oh, that really rings, rings nicely in my mouth, in my mind. And the very next day, somebody had put a post on Instagram about what a glimmer is. And a glimmer is the opposite of, of a uh, trigger. Mm -hmm. A glimmer is, is now being used a phrase to a little place of hope and joy and happiness. And I thought, what a perfect name for the store. What a perfect name. Yeah. Now, Ryan, how, yes. now, how did you and Carrie meet? Um, <laughs> it was kind of funny. She just put a post out on Instagram. Um, my wife uh, has some products at the um, store that she had her crystals at um, before Glimmer opened. And uh, she just sent it to me one day. Um, I've been um, starting uh, like a Reiki practice. And I just was like, well, maybe I can do something with this. So I just sent her a quick message and uh, I'm like, Hey, I do some stuff. If you're interested in meeting me, that's cool. And uh, she's like, yeah, okay. So we went and met and immediately clicked and talked nonstop for, yeah. I don't know, an hour or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then she just sent me an email like, yeah, Hey, let's, uh, let's do it. So like, all right. Like, now you do uh, quite a bit, quite a few different healing modalities. I mean, they all tie in together but they are different. What are the things that you do? Yeah. So I guess I can start at the beginning with you. I'm uh ex uh, first responder. So um, paramedic and firefighter uh, PTSD journey uh, kind of got me into uh, yoga um, along with uh, exercise to, um, to help with my recovery and, and dealing with um, just being able to continue work currently. Mm -hmm off and, and working on a transition uh, here and this is a big help but um, <laughs> uh, so my my practice that I've uh, developed here is based out of my yoga training so I uh, I'm a yoga teacher trainer I've got uh, over 500 hours of, of um, yoga teacher training under my belt now um, but I've also discovered breath work uh, energy healing mm -hmm. um, sacred geometry, lots of different modalities. So um, what I've developed here is um, I'm calling it a somatic breath work and yoga. So um, it's kind of a three-stage treatment that I do. So I start with a uh, movement to get you um, kind of in touch with your body and mind-body connection, um, focusing on chakra centers um, mm -hmm. uh, based in the seventh chakra system, and then um, and then move into breath work and um the breath work is kind of a, a transition phase where you you move yourself into the mental space to have a good um, meditation. So then we go into a meditation. So all of it will be based on a an intention that uh, my my clients present at the beginning, and then we'll work towards that as we move through it. And depending upon their experience as well, I'll adjust um, each modality for them. All right now, Ryan, what is um, sacred geometry? Oh, <laughs> that's a very big question. Um, <laughs> uh, it's uh, kind of uh, kind of based in uh, the Platonic solids, which is uh, uh, Plato's teachings from ancient Greece. Uh, his are based in uh, Atlantean teachings and and prior teachings to that that went through Egypt and and how uh, he was able to to do that. So it's uh, um, I forget the name right now, but you see it of uh, the videos all the time, and they use. Uh, like a vibration and a powder and then you see the geometry appear depending on the tone of that of that vibration so oh. that geom geometric shape um links to the tone and then that that vibration is kind of what moves energy into matter within the universe so um when they say uh in the beginning was the word the word um if you look at the yogic tradition was om a mm -hmm right so that was the, the word that created the universe the sound and then all other vibrations emitted from that and the the infinite vibrations are what's created the universe so if you use a tone and then that uh, um that that method of, of looking at it it can uh, vibrate water or powders and it, it creates shapes that look uh look amazing yeah <laughs> yeah wow i'd like to see that done yeah one of these days well maybe we could bring that in sure <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 that would be awesome so now carrie aside from um owning the store now you do different things as well now did you do something with akashic records no that's amy 
<laughs> that's Amy. Oh, okay. yes, that's Amy. Yeah. No, I, I believe that I was brought here on this journey to bring everything together mm -hmm. and to grow everyone. I mean, Ryan, Amy, all of them started out with one modality and it's hilarious because wow. we only opened on Saturday, mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. already they're all growing into, they're figuring out what it is that they should be doing and how they should be healing people. And it's already, all of them are already morphing into what they thought they were, into what they're becoming. And it's so beautiful to watch. So I, um, my claim to fame is that I use forest bathing. And that is something that has helped me mentally and physically through the years, mm -hmm. uh, the art of forest bathing. And I use that as a therapy. And that's how sort of all of this whole world opened up to me. Um, I'm a very logical person. I really like things to make sense. And I really like science-based things. And forest bathing nabbed me because it was a practice that is so spiritual but when you look into the science behind it it's so logical and that really flipped a switch in my brain to realize that a lot of these modalities are very logic based even though they're spiritual they're based in logic and that for me is something that is really important to show the community um, so that more people will take advantage of these healing, of these healing practices. Yeah. Well, when you look at them, I mean, any of my friends, they hear me talking about logic and saying, well, you know, it sounds logical to me. They're on the floor rolling, laughing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am not exactly a logical person. But when you look at all of these things, it makes sense. Absolutely. You know, um, when the earth was created, the creator, however you regard the creator, uh, everything was provided for us that we needed mm -hmm. to sustain our bodies, um, for herbs, for healing, uh, the knowledge, the wisdom, and, and wisdom of the ages. And what I think, what I find funny is all of these things that come up and it's like, oh, it's just being discovered. And it's like, you no, know, <laughs> like this has been going on for you. Absolutely. About stuff ever since I started, you know. For yes, like, that is so years, very true. Years. I say that all the time. There is nothing new under the sun. No. It's all just keeping going in a circle. Comes up, goes away, comes up, goes away. Yeah. 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 And and it's it's people remembering, I think. Yeah. Because Absolutely. In our, now I don't know if I'll get this right, um, but like in our DNA, we have all of this stuff from all of these different lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And at the right time, I believe, because uh, the universe always has plans. And so at the right time, these memories are brought back to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a time that my guides, when uh, Reiki first became sort of a really big thing and, oh, they were charging thousands of dollars to yes. take Reiki courses. And my guides got really upset because they all said, it's not theirs to sell. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't and belong to them. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's, that is, you sort of uh, hit the nail on the head with what my job, why my job is important because mm -hmm. Most people who are spiritual and who have something to give don't want to charge money. Yeah. And so that's where I come in because they need me. They need me to show them that it's okay for mm -hmm. them to charge money. Yeah. A reasonable amount of money for their healing practices. And that's okay. That's an okay thing. Well, it is. And you know, it took me a long time to feel comfortable. Yes. And to even put my prices up to where they should, well, almost where they should be, still yes. not quite. But, you know, I, especially when I first started and friends and, and that, they would come for readings and 
no offer of payment or anything, you know, they just figured, well, I'm your friend, you do it for me for nothing. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, they're on my doorstep and they're telling me about this psychic they went to see and they paid all this money. And you know what? She told me exactly what you did. Yeah. Like, I always, I always um like make the comparison because I'm an artist, right? I, I was yeah. a printmaker by trade, I'm a painter. And I always make this comparison because this is a classic line people say, oh. well, could you create this for me? It'll be really good for your portfolio. Like I can't pay you any money, but if you could do it for free. So same thing with spiritual things. And I always make this comparison. Say I'm an accountant. Do yeah. your friends come up to you and say, you know, it'd be really good experience for you if you just did my taxes for me <laughs> for free. Like yeah. nobody would ever ask that. But when it comes to healing and artists, people think yeah. it's just okay. <laughs> it's yeah. such a funny thing. Oh, it is. And yeah. as an artist, do you find it difficult to price your work? Oh, absolutely. Because you all artists, I don't care who you are. We all have imposter syndrome, which means mm -hmm. you're constantly second guessing. Am I actually good? Like, oh, could oh, I actually charge oh, someone fine. for this? Yeah. And it time. happens with all our professions in this sort of this sort of area is we're we're constantly like, am I just a faker? Like, am I just like, I'm, do I know how to paint? Do I know how to, you know, heal people? Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm just making all this up. So yeah, it's that, that's yeah. something. But I think that keeps us humble. I think yeah. that's not a bad thing as long yeah. as you can put yourself in check and go, no, I am worthy and I am worth it. You know, Absolutely. so as long as you have that balance, you're, you're probably, you're probably good. Yeah. Yeah. So Ryan, back to you now with the somatic, um, exactly like what is that? And now you do yoga, um, and you know, you see different, here I go, you see different things on Facebook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, and but I get ideas anyway, and then I go look for someone that I know is good. Um, but you see a lot with this chair yoga because mm -hmm. there are seniors, me yeah. being one of them, um, that do have some mobility issues. And I gotta tell you, if I ever got down on the floor, you'd never get me back up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and if I got down that low, it would be a miracle in itself. Yeah. So, you know, you see a lot of things with chair yoga. Is, does that really help? Like, is that a, a real thing? Yeah. Um, it's one of the modifications. Like yoga, you can modify for all the body types, right? So part of the studying, um, like the basic studying for the 200 hour is um, yoga for pregnant ladies. Like, how do you... How do you deal with that belly and all the poses, right? So you have to modify the twist so that you're paying attention to where that is. And then when they're lying on their back, you don't want to press down on that inferior vena cava. So you move them off that way. So just the same thing with chair yoga. If you can't stand up and do a warrior pose that you're going to fall down, <laughs> I want you yeah. to fall down, right? <laughs> so you can sit in the chair and do the same thing with your arms, right? So you're still looking at your posture. You're still looking at how your arms move. And you can still focus on on the energy moving through your body and, and how it makes you feel. So all of those things combined, it doesn't matter if you're sitting in a chair, lying on the floor or like on the cover of yoga journal, like those, it's all mm -hmm. the same thing, right? You're, you're paying attention to your body and going where, where you can go with yoga. Yoga is not about those ridiculous poses that we see people turn and impress. Mm -hmm. If you can get there, amazing. Oh, I know. But if you can't, amazing. You're still out yeah. trying. Right? And the movement in your body is the same as the movement in that person's body. So you're still moving the energy and you're, and you're, and you're moving your body, right? So you get a bit of the exercise, mm -hmm. you get um, the yogic benefits of all of it, along with the meditation, if you're linking your breath and your mind to all of that. So. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I actually was a yogi for 21 years. So I was a yoga oh. instructor for 21 years. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously with my condition, that's why I had to stop teaching it but yeah. you can still modify it and do it. That's, that's the whole, we went through this phase where yoga became about, you need to have your downward dog, your feet have to be on the ground. You have to do this. You have to do that. It became this Westernized sort of like picture thing that you had to do all these things mm -hmm. to perfection. And that's not what yoga is about. Yeah. 
Like it, it just became about that here. It's yeah. more about the breath and the flexibility and the, so yes, chair yoga, laying on the ground yoga, any kind of yoga you can get is good. Yeah. 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 See, I teach laughter yoga mm. and people, you know, when I tell people, yeah, well, you know, I laughter yoga. Oh, I couldn't do that because I can't do this and I can't do that. And it's like, well, no, you don't have to because the yoga part of it comes into the breath, the breath work. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the breath work is so important yeah, in, in so many different modalities and so many different aspects of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Years ago, that was a, a big thing that um, I heard uh, as I was learning yoga myself was it's a, it's a breathing practice mm -hmm. more than anything else. It's linking your breath to your body mindfully and that's the, that's for me, the key to yoga is to be able to move into a pose, kind of pay attention to my body and breathe. And then if you need to push it, you can still control your breath, right? So, yeah. Now, do you teach classes yet in yoga or in um, breath work? I have not, uh, I have not taught any classes. It's, um, I started, oh, started going... my training. I finished my first 200 hour training two weeks before the world shut down for the pandemic. So I had really big plans <laughs> that went right out the window. So um, I just started back, back into it. That's why I took a second 200 hour training just to kind of refresh myself. Mm -hmm. on that. So, yeah. yeah. And the whole, <laughs> like the whole thought with glimmer for me is to bring, um, to make it more personable personable so like i i don't want big classes filled with all kinds of different people i want the intimacy brought back yeah. quite honestly i love breath work but i don't want to be in a room with eight people i don't know crying my eyes out and screaming it's not my thing and no. so the thought of glimmer was that somebody can come in and do breath work with ryan well, he's on not one. going to teach it out of the store. He's going to teach it somewhere else. Totally. Oh, yes, totally. <laughs> but that was the thought of, of people who are maybe a little bit nervous about trying breath work. Maybe they would try it if it was just them and a friend or them and a spouse or them by themselves. Oh, and yeah. so then it would open the world to them saying, oh, now I know what this is all about. So that's kind of what, what we, like, we've already been in talks we, there's been a so much collaboration <laughs> happening with this place. It's so crazy. And I love it. Um, we've already been in talks with um, certain other people in the community that I have said, Oh, Ryan would be great for that. He should go and help at the detox center or somebody would be great. Amy would be great for that. Or Becky would be great for that. Mm -hmm. So already Glimmer has become, what was the word that yelled at me? Synergy. So, yeah. Glimmer has yeah. become this hub of a place where people can come and meet and go out and help others and other places in the community. Now, I mean, we've been talking about Glimmer and all these wonderful things and everyone's probably sitting there. Well, where is it? <laughs> oh, yes. Right. right. Where is it? Where do we find this, this wonderful place? <laughs> So our physical address is 677 6th Street East. If anyone wants to do the numerology on that, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and um, did. we are at the top of um, 6th Street Hill in Owen Sound. So if you know where Long and McQuaid Music Store is, we're kitty corner from them. And we're also right next door to Happy Yoga. Um, and I was very pleased that we have Jen next door um, for, for collaboration with her as well. So that's good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and like I say, it really, the energies in there, in the store are amazing. And while I was there, because you were really busy, so yes. I went into the back and I was talking to Amy and Becky mm -hmm. and even, you know, the energies back there in the, in the healing room are just so comfortable. Um, my husband was out in the car waiting for me. So, <laughs> but honestly, I could have sat there for hours. Yeah. Talking to them. It's, I really could have. It's, it's just such a, a wonderful, um, inviting, comfortable feeling. And when you, when you walk into the store, it is like, oh, wow, this is great. And you're not 
oh, I've got to get out of here. Um, oh, no, I don't like the the energy. And I am very susceptible to energies. I mean, I've walked into stores, turned around and walked right back out. It's like, nope. Like, there's, there's stores in town I won't go into. Yeah. They don't like the energy. And, yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. 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 Um, well, when when I looked at this place right from the get go, there was already a beautiful energy here and I could feel it the moment I walked in. And as I was in this place, so I grew up in Own Sound. And as I was in this place before it was all renovated, I started to have memories of my childhood. And I actually have so many ties to this building that I didn't think about Mm -hmm. so my father used to be the kirk's kirk's service station my dad had all beater cars and he used to get them fixed all the time and i spent a ton of time up here as a kid with that my grandma would get her hair cut at sheer experience which was next door this used to be part of a max milk which every friday night was treat night so we'd come up to max (laughs) milk and as i'm in the place i'm like oh my goodness i have so many childhood ties to this place Um So the energy right from the get-go was fantastic. And then we built the place and we decorated the place. And then I brought these six magical human beings in. And everyone who comes in here says they feel lighter just by walking in the the treatment room. Like the one girl yesterday said, like, I literally feel like my arms are floating. I have to touch the bed to make sure I'm still on the ground. Wow. And it's just the energy is just, yeah. it's so beautiful and light in here. Well, we're going to take a short break. And so don't go far. And okay. we'll be back. And lots more stories, I think, that they're <laughs> between the two of them, not just Carrie. I think Ryan holds back a lot on some. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, no, don't right. go You're away. And yeah. <laughs> don't go away and we'll be back soon. Okay. Sports is life. It's clear cut. Everything's out in the open. There's nowhere to hide. I had to prove myself more than anyone else. You must be so proud of your son. He's going to go pro. The sky's the limit. My nan go on on. There's always a winner and a loser. You cannot reach the sky in broken cleats. Of course, I always want to be the winner. And I did reach the sky. Norman Kwam, the first Chinese-Canadian professional football player, still holds records to this day. He retired from the sport in 1960 and later became Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. I did it. I need it. A hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did. that Carrie mentioned during break was about an indigenous tea that they carry. So, and Ryan went and got some samples or some things to show us the packaging and that. So what can you tell us about that? So um, I was, um, I've got some things to show you. So I was um, Ryan actually full of connections, this man. So he was telling me about uh, someone he knew he knows that is, um, kind of spearheading getting this tea out into the out into the marketplace so this is the tea um it this girl who is in the picture is the artist as well as one of the creators of the teas mm-hmm. so the teas are indigenous based obviously and they are based on the teachings of the seven grandfathers mm-hmm. and um i am one of the first people in this area to carry it which I'm so blessed because they've just been 
flying off the shelves, but you can see how beautiful the artwork is on these. And each one is based on a teaching. So this one is uh, bravery and um, they are, first of all, they're just delicious, all of them. So they all have different, different things in them. Some of them have lemongrass and they're based on, as I said, the seven teachings, but they're rainbow colored like the chakras. So if you, you know, go through a lot of our, our ancient teachings, they all are based on chakras, mm -hmm. no matter yeah. what, what, uh, what culture you, you dive into. Um, so I'm really, really blessed to be able to carry those. Um, and one thing I thought that was really neat. Um, I think Mike is to, is, <laughs> yeah. is for this one, yeah. but, uh, Mike Carrick is who, um, my person is who I, I deal with. And this is their little business card, which I need to show you because it is ingenious. It is filled with seeds so you can plant this and it becomes wildflowers. So like the card, yeah, I know. Yeah. So it's this beautiful it's amazing. Card. Yeah, and then you just plant it under an eighth of an inch of soil and it becomes yeah. black-eyed Susan and Lysium. And isn't that really, isn't that just ingenious? So they also have um, <laughs> chocolate. Yum, yum, yum. And they have coffee as well. So I'm just in the process of getting that in as well. But it was one of my biggest sellers on the weekend. And it's it's just, it is delicious. And it makes me so happy to carry such a beautiful healing tea brand. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I come in, I definitely want to take a look at the teas because- yes. And I'm lucky with my friends. So I've got to sample all of them. So I've had the <laughs> okay. coffee and the chocolate and they're all amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The chocolate, I would definitely be interested in. Yes, yes. But, uh, I'm doing this uh, quantum healing thing. Mm -hmm. And I've had to cut out because we're working on digestion. Yes. I get a lot of heartburn. Um, and I've had to cut out coffee. Yeah. And a lot of it is because of the caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> I know. yeah. So two of the, um, so there's the seven different types of teas. Um, one of them, the one I showed you is a full caffeine. It's a black tea. Mm -hmm. um, it's the only one with full caffeine. There's uh, the green tea, which is the wisdom tea, has a little bit of caffeine and all the rest of them are caffeine free. Ah, now oh. you, but you're giving them names. The green tea is. Yeah, so they all what have the names of some of the others. So there's respect, love, wisdom, truth, courage, honesty, courage, and honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're, as I said, they're based on the teachings of the seven grandfathers. Those are their teachings. So uh, for example, after my birthday, I got 300 happy birthdays and I thought, man, I need some humility tea to keep me in check. So I brewed myself a cup of yellow lemongrass humility tea and I felt much better. It kept my ego in check. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hmm. I'm, I, my daughters are taking me out uh, for lunch on Saturday for Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. And as you're talking about these teas, I'm thinking, Ooh, they would like. Yes. That. Maybe yeah. I'll have to check our schedules and maybe we'll just have to make a trip up to Owen Sound yes, this please. week instead of waiting till next week. Yeah. And I I love that everything I just happen to have in my store feels really nice. I'm a very tactile yeah. person. And these uh -huh. tea bags, like the like the outside of the coat, they're just like butter. So yeah. like even picking them up, people are like, whoa. And I swear they buy them because of the feel of them. Mm. <laughs> and I get that too, because like you, I am very tactile. I everything yes. it, it's touch and, and feels and texture. Yes, as soon as people walk into my store and turn to their children and say, don't touch anything, I say, if it's okay with your mom, you're allowed to touch anything you want in this store because you need yeah. to feel it all. <laughs> now, you have a lovely little store. Thank you. Okay. But down the road, <laughs> you're either going to expand to a larger store because you're going to have to or almost like doing a franchise type of thing that you will keep the original glimmer which is going to open up another one 
And it is going to, yeah, you've already figured this out. Um, <laughs> we're laughing because we've already been, we were already talking about expanding before we opened, which was hilarious. My husband's like, can we just get, can we just get a month under our belt first? Because of course he did all the construction in here. So he's like, can we just, yeah. just open first? Uh, we are already in talks about expanding. Um, Good. I had 52 people apply for this little room, this little practitioner room. That's how many people reached out to me, 52. And I could have, I, I picked the most magical six I could find, but I could have yeah. easily hired probably 30 people without thinking twice about it. So, mm -hmm. um, and when I say hired, not hired, had them come in and work out of my, my space. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, we are already in talks about a bigger spot yes yeah. not that i would leave this spot because i love no. this little, i love this little spot yep. so and yeah. it's and that's why i say it like i where i see you with the second one because this this is your first one and it's like this is your baby yeah you know th this is the start yes. and it's not hmm, how do i put this it's not so much, it's not you that's expanding, it's Glimmer. Yes. That's expanding. And when when you think of it with Glimmer, like what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a heart and I'm seeing rays of light spreading out from the heart. And they're, they've got the, the word Glimmer. They're putting the word Glimmer on the heart for me. And so it's like that, the heart chakra type of thing. And it's just really, really reaching out. And this is something that, it's needed now, but over the next year, year and a half, it is going to be needed even more so. All right. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of it will have to do um, with people's anxiety, stress levels. Yeah. Uh, me I'm, well, I'll just say mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. And because stress, anxiety, yeah. they, they are in a sense. Uh, oh, and they're also telling me addictions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that you'll be helping people with addictions. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I we. Well, Maya, <laughs> your face gives it away. So it was. It was really funny. It's funny that you say that because the other day Ryan and I were sitting there. Was that the sneak peek sale? Yes, yeah. and it was super busy. And suddenly we just had this lull, and he looked at me and he said, you have this beautiful pink aura around you right now. And when I looked up what the pink aura meant, it's literally what you've just described. The heart with the rays just shooting out everywhere. And um, I just had a healing session done with, um, with one of my practitioners, uh, Laura, and she said the same thing. There was so much glow shining off me that there were certain parts of the room she couldn't stand in because she couldn't get she couldn't get there because the glow was pushing her out of the way wow. and I don't want to cry but I kiss I I so desperately I have dealt with so much physical pro so many physical problems and mental problems mm -hmm. because of my physical problems and people tend to look at me and think I lived this wonderfully charmed life and I don't have any mental health issues. And it's really important for me to let people know that I do. I just choose to look on the light part and I choose to, to live a life full of uh, gratitude. And if you can learn to do, and I want I just want to show everybody that path through Ryan, through Becky, through Laura, through everybody who's here, Tyler, Alex, like there, there is a way to find gratitude and find light in the middle of all that. And it's just, I just want to bring that to this community so much. It's mm -hmm. yeah. I feel very passionate about it. Well, obviously. That, and it's true. You know, with every negative, there is always a positive. Always, always. always. And, and sometimes and, you have to look for it. Okay. And, your so, illness, your illness, look what it brought you to. Absolutely. Everything I've ever done has brought me to this point. Every trauma I've ever had, 
everything that has ever happened to me, whether it is good or bad, has brought me to the spot I am right now and has given me the knowledge to share with other people. So there is nothing in my life I regret. There is nothing in my life that I think that if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be this way or I wouldn't be that way because everything brings you to the point where you are. And I'm a different person than I was even five years ago. Yep. I've always been a happy person, but I've, I've never really come to terms with everything that has happened in my life and just felt, I feel pure gratitude. And I also feel pure love for myself. I love myself. I know that and not a lot of people can say that. And I want people to find that love for yes. themselves so badly. And yeah. I know they can. <laughs> oh, you bet they can. And you know, Ryan, everything that you have been through is t- still taking you to where you're meant to be because you're not there yet. No, they keep shoving no, me. No, no, no. You're at the very, you you are still at the very beginning of your journey. Okay. Um, y- you have a, a long way to go. You have a great distance to go and you are going to be learning some new uh, healing modalities as well, but not only from a physical teacher, from spirit guides. Okay, there's a, a teacher in spirit that's going to be coming through. Uh, he is indigenous. He's native. He's showing me a peace pipe, and he's passing the peace pipe around. Okay, and he doesn't uh, happen to be dressed in white, does he? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and the smoke. All right. And he is saying that it's not so much that you have to be taught; you have to be reminded because in a past life you were shaman. All right, and. He knew you then too, Um, but there are different signs that are going to be brought to you, whether it's white feathers. Uh, I'm seeing a lot to do with white smoke, but white, the the color white is is very important. And of course, white encompasses everything, right? All colors. And, uh, but so it's not so much teaching you these these new modalities, it's reminding you re where you are relearning not learning from brand new but relearning remembering yeah yeah and um carrie you are actually going to play a big part in this because there's something that you're going to do or say or show that is going to trip this memory just like every day yeah Yeah. (laughs) he says that to me almost every day he's like man <laughs> you know, when I first got into this uh, into this field, I mean, I, I've been interested in metaphysics basically my whole life, and but a lot of it scared me. And I, of course, never back then it was not as open as it is today. And I went for a reading this one time with a friend, and I w- went to see this Lizanne Gallup. This was down in Mississauga. And she told me that she was teaching some classes that she thought I'd be interested in, in tarot cards. And I thought, oh, God, here we go again. (laughs) Um, Because I had been to see, taken a friend who was possessed to see a white witch, um, Alf Moran. And he told me that I was going to read tarot cards. And I told him, absolutely no way, because they scared (laughs) the heck out of me. And I wouldn't, there's no way I would ever buy them. And he said, well, that's okay. You're not going to buy them because someone's going to give them to you on your birthday. I never told a soul. I thought, I'm not telling anybody. Well, didn't it happen, right? Yeah. So anyway, and then Lizanne starts on with this. So I thought, well, all right, I'll go. We paid per, it was $5 per class. And I thought, oh, if I don't like it, I'll just quit. Um, I was top student in the class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, it just kind of, Mm, went from there but she you know she always taught us too about the power of positive thinking Mm -hmm. oh yeah I there is so I'm supposed to be in a wheelchair right now Mm -hmm. I hike almost every day in my life some days I'm bad and I have to use a cane um and some days I'm great but there is there is no physical reason why I'm not in a wheelchair Nobody understands why. And I say, because I don't want to be. I just don't feel like it. So, and that's what I just keep saying. I I just get up every day and I'm like, today I'm going to walk and it's going to be great. And that's, 
just what I've been doing yeah. and yeah. positive thinking. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, with Lizanne, back to that for a minute, <laughs> she would, she would know that I could do things before I knew I could do it. And she would sit there with a stupid grin on her face. And it was like, whenever we saw it, it was like, oh, <laughs> no, it's happening. And the reason I'm telling this story is because Harry is your Lizanne. Okay. So <laughs> Becky, who you'll meet later, she calls oh. me her spirit animal or mm -hmm. her spirit guide <laughs> because every, because I, I know she has so much in her. Mm -hmm. She just needs me to give her the confidence to let it shine to the world. Yes. And I, that's what I hope I, that's what I try to do in everybody. I try to see what it is, where their shine is mm -hmm. and give them the confidence to show everybody else and him in particular. As soon as I met him, I knew he had so much to give <laughs> and he didn't even know it yet. <laughs> She's making me do a play too. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I took him out of his comfort zone. He's a really good musician mm -hmm. and I, I do plays. So I'm in this little one act and we needed a guitar player. So I, I didn't even give him a choice. I just mm -hmm. said, Oh, Ryan plays guitar. He's going to join us. So now mm -hmm. he's on stage. They gave him a line like, yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Ryan, I get it because that's the sort of thing that Lizanne used to do for me. Yeah. Or to me. And yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You know, but boy, I'll tell you, am I ever, I am so thankful that she did. Yeah. That's so lovely. Yeah. yeah I said to Carrie the other day, it's kind of like, I'm just hanging onto the side of this rocket that's going somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where it's going. Like, okay. I guess I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to talk about appointments too. If yeah. Now, are there certain days that you see clients, Ryan, or like certain times? Is yeah, I'm every second Wednesday see? afternoon and Thursday evenings right now. So, uh huh. Yeah, I'm here for three hours. So each practitioner has their own block. Um, so when you sign up, um, people are in different times throughout the week. So. All right, and if somebody would like to book an appointment for you, or with you, how do they do that? How do they go about it? How's your website going? Yeah, so yeah. the website. <laughs> yeah. So we are uh, www.glimmerowensound.ca. And you can go on there. You can read the bios of each of the practitioners and then a, a description of what they do. Um, all our prices are the same. So all, all sessions are 9777, no matter who you book with. Yeah, and I did I that so that price didn't become an issue with you choosing who really spoke to you. So that's why everybody's the same price. Um, and yeah, you just go on, you book, it tells you their availability. You click on the availability and you just sign up. Yeah. Yeah. I do have to ask, um, how did you come up with that number? The 9777? <laughs> yeah. Well... <laughs> This, so the sixes and sevens have become this crazy number that has been happening with this place. So as I said, our address is 677 6th Street East. Uh -huh. I went and got a bank account. It ended in 776. I got my Ontario business number. It ended in 667. I hired six practitioners. And with me, that makes seven. That was totally without me thinking about all this. And then suddenly one day I was like, holy moly, there's a lot of sixes and sevens. Um, and then Ryan was kind enough. Um, my father's going through a little bit of medical issues right now. And I was at the hospital with my mom and dad and Ryan sends me the numerology on what sixes and sevens means, specifically six, seven, seven, six. And it is literally everything glimmer is about um, mm -hmm. the rebirth and the, and and the starting of something new and it was about the person doing it which was me and how I was the caregiver and the head of the family and I looked after my family and took care of everything for them and so my dad starts crying my mom starts crying I start crying because that is what I am in my family and then I realized that these guys they're my family too yeah you know, all of my practitioners are my family everyone who walks in my door is my family and I just want to look after everybody. <laughs> so the sevens obviously just came about. And then giving the practitioners what they are worth, 
whether mm-hmm. or not some of them I had to talk into it. They were like, no, 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 no. I can't charge that much. And I said, yes, you can. You're worth it. And um, yeah, so that's kind of how the number came about. And then, as I said, I'm really, I'm really firm in my belief that this type of healing, these type of products don't just belong to the rich. They belong to everybody. And I will always keep my services and my products as low of a cost as I can, Mm -hmm. um, because I really feel that it's important that everybody can benefit from all of this. Yeah. And that was something I noticed when I came in, um, because I was looking at some of the crystals and uh, there was a a malachite uh, slab that I was drawn to. And I looked at it. I think it was $8 or $8.99 or something. $8. Yeah. And I looked at the price and I thought, that can't be right. Mm -hmm. Because I honestly expected it to be upwards of 20. Yeah. Well, I have been lucky. I found two direct dealers, which is really wonderful. So I have one in Indonesia and one in India. Mm. So the great part about that is I'm not paying 15 middlemen, you know, and yeah. so then I can keep my prices lower, which may, I also have some really unique things I've never seen anywhere else. Um, mm. The other thing is, is that I refuse to probably mark it up to where a um, a successful business person <laughs> should, but I think that abundance will just come back to me tenfold. Well, and I does. firmly believe that. Yeah. So, yeah, it really does. Now there was a little girl there and um, she had a, a cluster crystal. It was dark. And I asked her what it was and she said something about a rain. Was it rainbow something? So there were, there are aura ones. Was it a purple? Yeah. That, yeah, was aura, it was. It was aura aura. Quartz. yeah it was aura a, quartz. Okay. Yeah. yeah yeah they're very beautiful they're Ooh. almost gone i have more on order because those <laughs> those went like hot cakes they're so pretty and everyone thinks they're fake because they they kind of look like candy a lot of my stuff looks like candy yeah. doesn't it yeah. yeah yeah um but um they're not those ones are just heat treated that's the only difference between yeah. uh, between but them and one. other things now Oh, this is all dusty. <laughs> I should dust it. Um, but it was almost, except the, the points were bigger, but it was almost like this. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it was just a aura quartz. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so there's only beautiful. All the crystals are, are real. Um, obviously, I've been able to tell over the years which ones are real and which ones aren't. The only ones that are man-made in the store right now is bismuth, which is always Mm -hmm. man-made. And um, I have silicone in there, which is man-made. And I I don't know what it is about that. I I haven't showed it to you yet. I just got it. It's what they make microchips out of. And men just, it's always men who buy it. It's Mm -hmm. That's very interesting to me. I've never had a female buy a chunk of silicone. It's always men. And it's this shiny, it looks like tinfoil kind of a thing. But those are the only two man-made. There are things that are heat treated, like citrine is heat treated and any Mm -hmm. aura quartz or aura type thing is heat treated, but everything is all, all real. So, oh, wow. And I'm a fossil geek. So there's a lot of fossils in here too. (laughs) Love fossils. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Oh, here it is. (laughs) Okay, this is something you would probably be interested in. Um, this is actually a piece of the Bimini Road. Oh, mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very and nice. I can have it sitting in the sun, and I can hold it, and it's still cold. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's that's incredible. It's funny, speaking of hot and cold, it's amazing how some people feel their crystals through heat. So mm-hmm. I had this one woman pick up a dog's tooth calcite, and if it's kind of a, it's not the prettiest stone in the world, but it's to help aid with sleep. And anybody who's ever bought one puts it beside their bed and has a great night's sleep. So anyway, she picks it up and she's like, oh my, it's so hot. Like, this is so hot. I can barely hold it. And she gives it to me, stone cold to me. But for her, yeah. she felt it. She oh, could wow. feel the heat coming off it. I said, well, that means it belongs yes. to you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. and she said she took it home. And she's an insomniac. And she said that was the first good night's sleep that she had got in a very, very long time. And, and yeah. what's the name of that? It's called Dog's Tooth Calcite. And it's... you have any more in the store? Yes, I do. And it's funny because no. I always buy it. It's not, as I said, pretty, 
and the place I get it from, they're always like, you're the only person who buys yeah. this. And I'm like, if people knew the magic behind it, more people would buy it. Yeah. So you <laughs> put two to the side for me then? Yes. Yeah, of course. Because I've got one for me and one for my husband. Yep. Because he has nights that he doesn't always sleep well. Okay. And if yeah. I don't get in this week, I'll be in Monday at the latest. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming Got <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> and now it'll be because before, I mean, we love going to Kettles, right? For dinner, yes. either there or Elsie's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last time we went to Elsie's, um, Russ got a, a banana split. First time he's had one in years. Nice. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we want to go there or there. So what's the excuse for going to Owen Sound? There you go. Now you have to. Now I have to because you have become no, my excuse. You're my reason. Yeah. Go to Glimmer. <laughs> I need more crystals. I, I love it. In my office, and he'll look around and it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> really See, that's need more? I tell everybody that's why I started this store because my husband wouldn't let me buy any more for the house. So now I can just come to Glimmer every day and be surrounded in them. <laughs> oh, I know. It's. But one, I mean, I'm I'm like that with tarot cards as well, and I've got so many decks of tarot cards yes. that I have collected over 35, 40 years, mm -hmm. and I've also made my own deck. Like I've created my own deck of cards. Very cool. And, uh, they're the ones that I use the most, mm -hmm. and every so often I still buy more decks. And and Russ is like, why are you buying more cards? I like them. <laughs> 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 see you have to learn the trick i did because i i'm a costume designer as well and i love dresses like one so during covid when i was bored i thought i'm going to try on every dress i own and take a picture and make a big mo montage it took me four hours <laughs> i had over 170 dresses i have nine closets full of anyways anytime i wear a new dress that my husband hasn't seen and he says Oh, did you get another dress? I just say to him, oh my, God, I've had this for years. I can't believe you don't remember it. So you start doing that with your crystals. Just lie and say, I've had this for a long time. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> Tricks. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. The, the things that we do. But you know, I'm sure men are not much different. No. 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 <laughs> Anyway, um, we've got a minute left. Is there any last message that you would like to get out to people? I just come and experience it for yourself. That's all I can say. Come into the store um, and just experience what we have to offer. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yeah, and I, honestly, I don't think that you will either. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I live down by King Garden and I'm willing to drive all the way to Owen Sound because I want crystals. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just about the crystals it is the energy yes. within the store itself absolutely and it's something that i i can sit here and i can tell you how wonderful it is but i honestly i cannot explain it you it's something that you have to go and feel for yourself yes so but anyway it has been wonderful having you both on as guests yes. and on on our next show we have Two more people from Glimmer. Yay! Yay. That's awesome. So, um, you know, enjoy your, your week. We've got beautiful weather here. Be careful out driving. And remember, always keep laughter in your heart. Mm -hmm. See you later. Due to the length of the preceding program, we now join the regularly scheduled program already in progress. This could be part of, you were mentioning it as we walked in, Tamara. Yes, we have two types of end-to-end -end types uh, hikes. One is on the main trail, 
which is the white blazes. And these are hikes called end to end that go from Wireton to Toborbori that Sauber as hike director has, has organized. And not only has he organized these hikes, he also leads these leads. hikes. Ah. And Sauber also leads a series of hikes that do all of the side trails. So Sauber is our one stop shop, whether you want to do the main trail, whether you want to do all the side trails, uh, Sauber as hike director has that organized and he also um, organizes the hike leaders as well. Oh, we're in good hands. Yes. We're in very good hands. Okay, I'm anxious to get in and see. So we are at Williams... Williams Cave side trail. Okay. It's and right up there. Right up through here. Yes. Oh, I'm anxious to have a look. Come on, let's go. Yeah. So Bar, this is fantastic. I can feel the coolness coming off the rock. It's, I'm in awe of it. Yeah, absolutely yeah. gorgeous.